All right, let's see what we can do with Cameron's deck. Sethron Herloon General is a legendary Minotaur. Whenever he or another non-token Minotaur enters the battlefield under your control, you create a 2-3 red Minotaur, and then you can pay 2 and a Rakdos. Minotaurs you control get plus 1, plus 0. Oh, gain Menace and Haste until end of turn. So basically, we're going to be wanting to cast a lot of Minotaurs. If you look at this deck list, it looks amazing. There are so many really cool things, lots of little Easter eggs in here, and I think it's really awesome. The problem is, is that it's kind of slow. The mana curve is a little bit large and there's just not enough ramp and there's too many enablers. That's what I've noticed straight off the bat. So let's look at what we can get rid of first before we can start adding new cards. First off, we're gonna get rid of Angrath the Flame Chain. Yes, Angrath is a Minotaur and it's kind of a flavor win here, but it his abilities don't really match with what the deck is trying to do, which is attack with Minotaurs. And all of his abilities are kind of all over the place, and they're not really helpful for Sethron. So he just kind of sits there and then does some random stuff, and then, you know, there's, you kind of play around it. And it's not exactly that helpful for what the deck is trying to do. So we're going to cut that. Next, we're going to go into creatures. Skophos War Leader. This is the first to go. Its mana cost is a little bit high. And what I noticed with all these creatures was that there was a weird balance between discarding and sacrificing permanence. And it was just it was just kind of weird, and I think it was a little bit too much. So getting rid of Skophos War Leader gets rid of that ability to sacrifice a creature enchantment. Sure, it gives it a little bit of a buff, but I think there's better ways to do this. Next is Dream Shaper Shaman. Six mana for something that you can sacrifice sacrifice another thing and then put in a ton of mana into this to reveal one of those permanents onto the battlefield. Yes, it's really cool, but also it's just too much mana. I think cutting this just lowers the bell curve. Merciless Javelinier. This is another cool one. I love the art. I love what it does. But again, this is one of those weird discard ones and then put a minus one minus one counter on a creature. And then it's just, it kind of takes the deck in a weird direction that doesn't really help. So it's, I just cut it all together. Blood Rage Brawler, again, another discard thing. When it enters, you discard a card, which would be great if there are more of a discard uh, centric theme, but there are only, you know, five to eight cards that discarded and it was just kind of like a weird match. And even though it has a high power and toughness, I, I think it was, I don't know, maybe it's wrong to cut, but I, I cut for something a little bit better and you'll see here in a little bit. Slaughter Priest of Mogus, another one that sacrifices permanence and it's got a weird permanent sacrificing sub theme that I didn't really find beneficial to the deck, so we're just gonna cut it. A Koem Warrior, while yes, it does act as a land sometimes, it's a six cost four or five with trample. It's just a French vanilla creature that costs like two mana extra. It just felt like a lot and just, I got rid of enough cards to add some more lands to the deck. So the dual moto face card doesn't do as well, I think. Minotaur Skull Cleaver. This one's great, but it's just kind of a little lackluster. Cause it enters, boom, it's a four, two, and then that's it. And that doesn't have any other abilities because basically haste goes away and then the other ability goes away. And then it's just a two, two for three at the end of the day. <laughs> it's a little bit wonky. I really like it, but I, I think we should cut it for some better creatures. Barging Sergeant, this one's another super high cost for a hasty creature, but it's only a 4-2, and it's got Mentor, but that doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, I don't know, it's just a little little too much of a high cost for me, so I'd cut it. And last but not least, this is Mogus God of Slaughter himself. Now, Mogus, yes, while he is a Minotaur, he's not actually a Minotaur in the game. Uh, he's a God creature. And then you just kind of have this extra creature that does another random thing. This is the same thing as Angrath with its really cool flavor win, but also it kind of takes the deck in a weird direction. You have this tiny little sub theme that really doesn't help you. So I've, I've cut Mogus. We're gonna go into artifacts now. Farsight Mask. This one's actually really cool. I love this card. Whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to you, if it's untapped, you may draw a card. That's awesome because you're going to be aggravating a lot of people. If they hit you, you're gonna draw a card. But guess what? This is a five cost artifact and it's not really a good card draw engine, which is kind of what I feel like it's was supposed to be doing in the deck, but it's really contingent upon whoever's attacking you. And so you've got this weird thing, like if nobody 
deals damage to you, you just don't draw any cards, and then you've paid five mana for nothing. <laughs> so it's a, it's a weird it's a weird card. It's really fun, but I think there's better ways to accelerate ourselves a little bit faster. Pyre of Heroes. This one's really good, except we're sacrificing more creatures. And since all of these creatures are probably going to be a higher mana cost, we don't really want to sacrifice them. So it's sure it searches for other creatures that you'd like, but we've got Grim Tutor in here and Death Bella War Cry, which both search for things. And I think we can just, I don't know, cross that off, <laughs> cross that off the list. Cloudstone Curio. Now, I don't know if Cameron's seeing something that I'm not, um, like some sort of combo. But usually Cloudstone Curio is all about combos, and I didn't really see many. There weren't many leave the battlefield or enter the battlefield effects, like less than 10 or something like that. So this one didn't really hit much combo piece type stuff for me. I don't know, it triggers with the commander, but that's, I don't know, that's, that's not good enough to... <laughs> to justify this, I think. Plus it's just another card that just kind of sits there. And then if you don't have enough mana to cast all your Minotaurs, it doesn't really do that much. I don't know, that's just my opinion. You take it or leave any of this advice, Cameron. Heartstone, this is another one that's, sure, it can help bring down the activated ability of your commander, but it's only by one, and it then just kind of sits here. And the commander is basically the only one that had an ability that you could reasonably <laughs> move down. There's another great card that, I don't know, I think is better in other decks. Helm of the Host, this is a fantastic fantastic card in basically every deck, but I think it can fit better in other decks. So you can trigger Sethron with making more Minotaurs over and over and over again. But again, if this just kind of sits there, it's another, that's nine mana to do its first ability and Sethron's already five mana. And then he got his activated ability with his three mana. And you're just putting in so much mana, all this stuff. And then at the end of the day, you've got a couple Minotaurs. And I don't, I think the deck can run smoother than that. Icon of Ancestry. The problem with these ones was you had so many creature buffs in there that were just kind of enabling the Minotaurs, but you didn't have enough Minotaurs to enable. So you had a bunch of things that gave them all plus one, plus one, which is fine, but then you just had too many of them. And then sure you get one or two Minotaurs that are super beefy, but then they die really easily. I don't know, we should cut down on those things to add more Minotaurs and more ways to draw cards, more lands, stuff like that. Heraldic Banner, here's another one. You choose a color, creatures you can control of the color get plus one plus oh, and then it also doubles as a mana rock. Not all your Minotaurs are the same color. Sure, most of them are red, but what about the occasional black Minotaur? This one's pretty darn good in single color decks. I guess it's okay in double color decks, but I think there's better ways to mana ramp and you already had enough creature enablers as well, like I said, so I cut this one. Coat of Arms, this one's fantastic. This is a great card, but again, we kind of have to pick and choose what creature buffs we're gonna keep because we can't have every single one of them and this one's just really expensive and if you've got no minotaurs it does nothing so this is kind of this weird super good card but also you're not getting as many things this one's great in like goblin decks because you've got so many goblins all at once and then they just buff each other super fast but with the high mana costs of all these minotaurs you're gonna have you know two or three minotaurs out and then they each get plus one or plus two again which is pretty good but also it's a lot of mana to put into it again trying to lower that bell curve Panharmonicon. This is another enabler that I thought was kind of interesting. Sure, it does help Sethron's enter the battlefield effect. And sure, you can make more of those two, three Minotaurs. But I think this was one of those that, yes, it does help. But in a red and black deck, you're not going to have all that much mana. So again, you're going to cast Sethron, it dies. And then you cast Sethron again, it's seven mana. And then you get an extra two, three with it, right? And then I don't know, it's just a lot of mana to put into things. And then this might just sit here and not do much especially with your other creatures that don't have enter the battlefield effects. So the, I think there's better decks that this could go into, but again, I, I understand why it's in there. Moving on to enchantments, we've got Impact Tremors, another great card. Whenever a creature enters under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. That's great, but again, your creatures are very expensive, so you're not going to be having boom Minotaur, boom Minotaur, boom Minotaur, boom Minotaur. It's going to be one Minotaur or two Minotaurs a turn, and then it's only a couple damage. So it is good, but I think we can up the damage with our Minotaurs instead. Curse of Opulence, this this one's great because you just make a bunch of gold but guess what it's contingent upon if somebody attacks a certain player and that's that's not really good for ramping so i've kind of just cut this one and i've opted for something that's a little bit faster you find some prisoners as our last one which is an instant you can destroy an artifact or exile top three cards of a, somebody else's library you can choose one of them and then tell your next turn you can play that card and use any mana to do so. This is a weird one. Sure, you can destroy an artifact, but the interrogate them ability is kind of is stealing from somebody else's deck. Is that 
really helping. You know, I'd, I'd rather have cards for my own deck personally, unless I'm in a deck that provides chaos. So yeah, I kind of threw this one out and found something that I think is a little bit faster. Cameron, if you don't like any of these cuts, just <laughs> you don't have to take any of this advice. Uh, but we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it. This is what I would do in the deck, and here's what I would add to the deck. So for our creatures, we're gonna have Bloodline Pretender. This one is every card type, so it's a Minotaur. And when it enters, you choose Minotaur. Whenever a Minotaur enters, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Boom! You've got a cheaper, fast guy that just builds and builds and builds and i think that's pretty neat gnarled scarhide this is a one mana cost minotaur boom you've got a minotaur and if you've got seth run out you get an extra minotaur it's just a cheap way to get more minotaurs how many times can we say that in the video it can't block and then if you bestow it trigger creature gets plus two plus one and can't block and then it falls off and then it's another minotaur it's it's just it's just good i like it death bellow raider this is a two three for two mana we're trying to lower that mana curve so i opted to put in some lower mana cost minotaurs it attacks these turn of able which might be bad but also you can regenerate it if you need so that's just an added bonus for this guy sardian cliff stomper this is a great new one uh, as long as it's your turn and you control four more mountains cliff stomper gets plus x plus o where x is the number of mountains you control which is fantastic so you probably have more mountains i added more to the deck and you should be able to activate this relatively easily plus it's a zero four for two mana which isn't bad and all your other creature buffs in here are going to help it out as well oracle of bones this is a minotaur shaman three one with haste it's got a tribute cost of two and then whenever it enters if tribute wasn't paid you can cast an instant or sorcery from your hand without paying its mana cost that's kind of an incentive for people to make this a five three which isn't bad <laughs> otherwise you can cast one of these awesome instants of sorceries from your hand for free which ain't bad lord of shatter skull pass and this is a level up card and it starts as a three three for four which is not good but when you level it up and get it to level six, when it attacks, it deals six damage to each creature defending player controls. That's amazing. So this automatically becomes a kill on sight thing, which kind of pulls the damage away from Sethron, let's say. And so it's kind of a cool guy. <laughs> and you only have to level it up once to make it a 6-6, six, six, so that's not bad either. Tangarth, Talrum Hero. It's got Vigilance, and you can basically have it fight a creature, which acts kind of as a removal spell a little bit. You know, you can fight somebody's little mana dorks or something like that, and then you've got all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so anyway. All right, let's get into the card advantage cards. We've got Ren's Resolve. I love this new card. So you exile the top two cards of your library, and then till the end of your next turn, you can play those cards. It's a, it's a type of red card advantage, which I really like. You can kind of look at those crap i can't play that no that sucks just get just kidding guess what i can play it next turn if there's land there you can play it next turn stuff like that it's really great and it just helps move the deck along a little bit faster light up the stage it does the exact same thing but it's got a spectacle cost of red so once you deal damage with your minotaurs you can play this for red and then you can play those cards till your next turn knight's whisper one in a black draw two cards lose two life super simple a lot of these cards get overlooked because they're like kind of dumb little commons but honestly drawing cards at a faster rate i think is more important than having something that's a 10 cost that draws you cards for everything that farts <laughs> you know <laughs> so i'd rather just get things moving Moving along and kill the opponent. Infiltration Lens, whenever equipped creature becomes blocked by a creature, you may draw two cards since we are going to be attacking a lot. Once your creature becomes blocked, you'll just you'll draw two cards. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's awesome. I think this is a great card. We needed a little bit more land ramp. A lot of the ramp was in the form of artifacts and wayfarer's bobble of course is an artifact but it searches for a basic land card into the play tapped which I'd, I'd rather have lands than the artifacts anyway i think this is a great one just to just to help out a little bit psalm salacrum again when it dies you draw a card but also when it enters you look for a, a land on the battlefield great land ramp another kind of rampy spell is neheb the eternal uh, at the beginning of your post combat main phase you add a red for each one life your opponents have lost this turn which can stack up a lot and then you can cast more minotaurs this is this one's pretty neat and i really really like it now moving on to our enablers that i you know i got rid of some and then added some that just make a little bit more sense anabi spirit crafter is one it counts as a minotaur itself so when it enters sethron triggers and then it gives all your minotaurs plus one plus zero. Oh. sure it's not a plus one plus one buff but you trigger that minotaur effect and then all the other ones you know whatever they all stack 
Rising of the Day, this one's not a Minotaur, but it's a really cool one. The creatures you control have haste, so that's just kind of nice if Sethron's not out to activate his ability, or if you don't have enough mana to activate his ability. Plus, it gives your legendary creatures plus one plus zero as an added bonus. Sonorous Hellbinder, this one is not a Minotaur, but each creature you control with Menace can't be blocked except by three or more creatures, making your Minotaurs even harder to block. Sethron can give all your Minotaurs Menace. So, making all those things unable to be blocked by three, except by three or more creatures, that's insane. I don't know, this one's just pretty awesome, especially pairing it with Sethron. Another one, which is kind of like that, is Labyrinth Raptor, actually from the same set. It's got Menace, and then whenever a creature you control with Menace becomes blocked, defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it, which is awesome, and then you can buff your creatures with Menace by giving them plus one, plus oh. So it's just, all your things are gonna have Menace, all your things are gonna get buffed, and they just stack and stack and stack. I think it's awesome. Okay, this last one's a little bit weird, and you might think, what the heck is going on with this one? Forever Young? Put any number of target creatures from your graveyard on top of your library and then you draw a card so this not only acts as a like a slight card draw spell it also you can put any number of minotaurs that just died on top of your library and then you draw one of them so you can kind of pick and choose what goes on top and then boom you've got it back to your hand stuff like that there are only two cards that brought stuff back from the graveyard so adding a third just kind of helps a little bit and i think i really like it but of course there's probably other cards that do this better but this is kind of what i found on a short notice <laughs> and of course i've added some more swamps and mountains making this a little bit better because the land base when i saw it initially was still slow i think I think that's part of what made the deck slow was the lands. There were 12 lands that entered tapped. It just kind of slows the deck down. To me, I'd rather have the classic basic lands to be able to just cast spells immediately. So I've gotten rid of a few of the tapped ones and then just put more in basics in. And then they can just help you out a little bit faster and then you're not as slow as everybody else. You know, unless you have any of the expensive lands. <laughs> but if you don't, basics are great. So Cameron, I hope you liked this. Uh, please take this all with a grain of salt. You don't have to listen to anything I said, but I think that's your main things is that A, you had too many enablers, too many enablers and not enough minotaurs to trigger those enablers or etc. B, too many creature buffs. Creature buffs are awesome, but you had enough creature buffs within the minotaurs themselves. They didn't really need the other ones. And plus Sethron also gives them a buff as well. So I think there are just too many. C, I think your mana costs were too high. I tried to bring that down. You can kind of see the curves here side by side, and I hope that helps a little bit. And then fourth, a lot of your lands entered tapped, which slowed the deck down a lot. 12% of your deck was entering tapped, so it was just kind of slowing it down a bit. I hope this helped. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss your weekly dose of magic. And thank you so much for Cameron for letting me do this. So we'll see you next week, everybody.